Anzu Hashino is a high schooler who's a little different from her peers. As a girl, one would expect her to love nail painting, gossiping, romance, and pink-colored stuff. However, Anzu is a girl like no other. Her primary interests include playing video games, eating chocolate, and competing with other boys. Don't forget her cat, Momohiki. Anzu loves her cat to stupor and would do anything for the little fella. One day, while preparing to leave for school, Anzu receives a package. Upon opening it, she finds the limited edition video game she ordered a while ago, and a box of chocolate along with it. Anzu is psyched to see that her waiting is finally over. Little did she know that a supernatural force was about to change her love life forever. After school, Anzu hops right into her new video game. The game, which is composed entirely of romance and boring stuff, bores her out. Just as she's about to exit the game, a weird peanut-looking creature wearing a blue hat and holding a wand morphs out of the TV screen. She introduces herself as Riri, a wizard from the game and also states her intent. Riri intends to help her boring test subject, Anzu, find love in real life. Anzu just shushes her away but Riri stays back and tells her she designed this game specifically for her and now that she's fallen for the trap, she would have no choice but to participate in her Eichmann game. Anzu tells her not to worry, that she'll just go back to her normal life and ignore the boys Riri sends her way. Unfortunately for her, Riri had already confiscated all the goodies Anzu needed to survive. Her games, chocolate and even Momohiki are now gone for the meantime just so Anzu can focus on her upcoming romance adventure. Anzu loses it as she screams out loud in frustration. Riri tells her that she has no choice. If she wants her living supplies back, she has to go through the test. Shortly afterwards, Riri disappears. Anzu immediately rushes to the living room and finds Momohiki on top of the air conditioner. Just then, her dad returns from work and breaks it to his wife that they've been sent to work abroad. Anzu cannot believe her eyes as her parents make plans to get to the US without her. The very next day, Anzu's parents catch the first plane to the US, leaving Anzu alone with Riri. As soon as they're gone, Riri appears to Anzu to say hi. Anzu throws her to the ground and rushes to the convenience store nearby to buy some chocolate. Unfortunately for her, all of them were out of chocolate. It's then that Anzu takes Riri seriously. She decides she'll follow through with Riri's plan but just won't fall in love with any of the Eichmann sent her way. She walks out of the store and runs into the hottest freshman in her school, Tsukasa Kazuki. The two have a not-so-normal conversation and Anzu runs away. The following day, while on her way to school, Riri appears to Anzu in the subway and knocks her down before disappearing. Tsukasa shows up moments later and stares at her. Soon, his friend arrives and begins to make a big deal out of things. Tsukasa just ups and leaves without saying hi. After walking a few more meters, Tsukasa rejects a female student's love letter. Anzu experiences the girl's pain and hates Tsukasa even more. Soon, she finds another female talking to him and promises never to date him. During lunch break, Anzu and Tsukasa stand next to each other and order the same lunch. Obviously, Anzu sits with her friend but they discuss Tsukasa. Her friend tells her about Tsukasa's cool personality and wishes they could get along well. Just then, Anzu hears Tsukasa's voice behind her and has a meltdown from the sound of it. A few hours later, Anzu gets very hungry and bored since all her living supplies have been taken away from her. When she finally decides to make dinner, she finds a roach in her kitchen. She immediately throws a fit and runs outside her own house to a children's playground to hide from the terrible roach. Moments later, rain starts falling and Anzu is stranded. Luckily for her, the Eichmann, Tsukasa was just nearby with an umbrella as he was returning from the convenience store nearby. Tsukasa spots Anzu sitting in the children's park all cold and sneezy. He stops by and tells her to be careful of hanging out at night as there are perverts around the corner. Anzu quickly gets up and races back home. Tsukasa stops her and offers her his umbrella. Anzu tries to reject his help but Tsukasa forces her under his umbrella and takes her to her house. Anzu, being the clutch she is, pisses Tsukasa off with her clumsiness. Still, Tsukasa keeps his cool and walks her home. When they get home, Anzu keeps fidgeting over allowing a hottie like Tsukasa to stay over at her place. She constantly reminds herself to keep cool and avoid falling in love with him. Tsukasa gives her a towel to dry up and asks her what she is doing at the park late at night. Anzu narrates her horrible experience with the roach that forced her out of her house and this makes Tsukasa, the cold dude, chuckle a little bit. 
Anzu gets super embarrassed but Tsukasa brushes it off. He offers to help her kill the roach but Anzu tries to get him not to. Eventually, Tsukasa picks up a newspaper, folds it, and begins searching for the roach. Anzu waits for him to turn his back on her so she can attack him and knock him out. Well, this did work but then again, Anzu finds herself in an unsightly situation with Tsukasa. Tsukasa spots the roach, gets up and smacks the pest to oblivion. Then, he gets up and takes his leave. Before he goes, he dishes out some advice to Anzu and opens the door to get out. Sadly for him, the rainstorm outside was worse than before. Still, Tsukasa chose to rugged it. However, he quickly changes his mind when a tree branch crashes into Anzu's door. Now he has to stay over at her place. After watching the terrible news together, Anzu gets very scared. Now the Eichmann, Aka handsome man, is staying over at her place. At one point, she gets hungry and checks her fridge for some frozen food. Sadly, there isn't. Riri appears to her at that point and advises her to show off her cooking skills to her visitor. Anzu takes a pan and smacks some sense into Riri's head. She then asks Riri if she has anything to do with the rainstorm outside. Riri smiles and tells Anzu she'll stop at nothing to get her romantic life in order. Anzu's stomach was basically roaring at this point so she decided to cook up something. She takes out some miso cup noodles and cooks up something special for both of them. After eating the contents, Anzu and Tsukasa sit down next to each other. Anzu tells Tsukasa to stay the night instead of just waiting for the rain to stop falling. Tsukasa reluctantly agrees to stay over so Anzu gets him her dad's pajamas for him to change into. Tsukasa gets his warm bath and puts on some of the clothes Anzu gave him. Anzu goes in for her turn and returns with her pajamas tucked into her pants. Both Riri and Tsukasa are turned off by her weird dressing style. Moving on, Anzu engages Tsukasa in a reversey game. Tsukasa accepts her challenge and loses his first, second, third and fourth game to her. Annoyed, Tsukasa asks them to change games. The next game on board is Snake and Ladder. Anzu makes things more interesting by making sure the loser of this next game makes their lunch for school the following day. So the game begins and Anzu's luck begins running out as she keeps running into debt and traps. Anzu lets out a frustrated cry and eventually finds out Riri is the one behind her misfortune. This encourages her to keep on trying her luck. Unfortunately for her, she still doesn't win. Riri appears to gloat but Anzu punches her. Anzu gets to the kitchen to prepare lunch for the next day in school. Tsukasa takes pity on her and offers to help her out. Anzu's psyched to see Tsukasa helping her out. After putting on his apron, he spots Anzu seasoning her omelette with sugar and calls her weird. Anzu keeps arguing with him so he lets her do her thing. Anzu ends up burning her omelette. Tsukasa just sighed and prepared some light dinner alongside the lunch they'd be taking to school the following day. The two have a little more fun in the kitchen talking about food and their weird interests. At one point, Anzu actually finds herself liking Tsukasa. She quickly snaps back to reality and continues whatever she's doing. After doing all the kitchen work, Tsukasa hits the bathroom for a quick shower. When he gets back, he finds Anzu already asleep. He takes her glasses off her eyes and stays next to her on the couch. Anzu pulls his hand closer to herself and holds them while she sleeps. While asleep, Anzu has a nightmare about her wonderful Momohiki cat breaking up and running away from her. She suddenly snaps back to reality and wakes up in Tsukasa's arms. Seeing the situation she was in, Anzu recoils and throws a fit from the embarrassment. Tsukasa urges her to keep it down as she's the one who forced him into such a position. Anzu apologizes for her clumsiness and gets ready for school. Tsukasa leaves shortly and heads off to his home to prepare for school. After leaving, Anzu discovers that Tsukasa left his lunch box behind. However, since he's already far gone, she decides to hand it over when they meet in school. After getting herself ready for school, Anzu stops for a moment to think about the previous night. She tries to remember how she dozed off in his arms but just can't find out how. Just then, Tsukasa rings her doorbell. Anzu answers it and finds out something's very wrong somewhere. Tsukasa takes Anzu to his room and shows her the mess it's in. Apparently, the heavy rain from the previous night had soiled only Tsukasa's room. Tsukasa wonders why the rain would affect only his room out of the others, but Anzu knows for sure that Riri's behind this. Eventually, Tsukasa borrows Anzu's phone to make some calls before handing it back to her. Then, the duo get back outside where Tsukasa collects his lunchbox and Anzu's number to make a call. He thanks her for the help and urges her to get to school before it's too late. Anzu says her goodbyes and leaves for school. School goes on normally for that day. However, Tsukasa meets with a real estate agent to get a new room and also gets a part-time job at a laundromat before it's lunchtime. 
During the school's lunch break, Anzu settles down in the cafeteria to eat with her friend, Saki. She contemplates telling Saki about her saga with Tsukasa but chooses not to do that in the meantime. A few minutes into lunch, Tsukasa calls Anzu to invite her for a meeting at some place around town. Firstly, Anzu asks him how he's able to call her seeing as his phone is gone. Tsukasa tells her he just bought another one and that's why he would call her. Anzu then accepts his invitation and continues eating lunch. Elsewhere, the school's principal alongside Rina, one of Tsukasa's serious stalkers, and her friend, all try to phone Tsukasa. Surprisingly, Riri manipulates the call such that Anzu's the one that picks. In the meantime, Tsukasa sits by the restaurant and waits for Anzu to come by. When she does, he's disappointed to find out Rina, his annoying stalker and her friend, followed her. Annoyed, Tsukasa asks for an explanation and Anzu tells him the girls forced themselves to follow her after finding out about her date with him. Tsukasa sighs, gets up and grabs Anzu by the arm to leave the restaurant. The girls are shocked as to why he'd do such a thing but Tsukasa tells them his date is with Anzu and not them. Then, he leaves the restaurant with Anzu and takes her on a walk. There, Anzu apologizes to Tsukasa for letting those girls follow her. Tsukasa apologizes for taking it out on her and tells her he's just so tired of girls following around town. He's not ready for a relationship at the moment but the girls don't seem to get it. He, however, admits that Anzu's quite different from the rest of them as she never tried to approach him. Anzu smiles sheepishly and then makes things clear that they're just friends. Tsukasa agrees with her and then asks if he could keep his stuff with her in the meantime. Before Anzu could answer, he picked up a call from the real estate agent. When he's done, he breaks the bad news to Anzu. Turns out there are no free apartments for him to stay at, another one of Riri's tricks. Tsukasa asks if he could stay at Anzu's apartment for a month or at least till he finds another apartment. In return, he'll cook delicacies for her and help her out when needed. Anzu thinks about the traps and goodies she stands to enjoy from living with the Eichmann. Eventually, she accepts his request and Tsukasa moves in right away. The following morning, Anzu wakes up to Tsukasa packing their lunch. She gets down to watch him cook and compliments him while doing so. After packing their lunch, Tsukasa makes them a quick breakfast before getting to school. While eating, Tsukasa remembers his gym clothes and walks inside to get them after asking Anzu to help him pack his lunch. When he's gone, Riri shows up to gloat about Anzu's new romantic life. Anzu, however, lets Riri know that Tsukasa's not ready for dating anytime soon. Riri the wizard laughs and makes her know that another Eichmann is coming her way. Just then, the doorbell rings and Anzu finds her childhood friend, Junta, at her door. Sadly for her, she couldn't recognize him but Junta recognized her. She asks for his identity and Junta explains everything to her. Before she can chase him away, Tsukasa joins them and stares at both of them. All three of them find themselves in a love triangle as the two boys keep wondering who the other person is, Anzu. Anzu, on the other hand, stands there shell-shocked to see two Eichmann get jealous of her. After a few seconds of silence between the three, Junta finally breaks it off by asking Tsukasa what he is doing at Anzu's place. Anzu quickly budges in and explains to him that Tsukasa is staying over in the meantime while his room situation gets back to normal. Junta gets flustered and makes a silly face. Anzu picks Riri and takes her inside to scold her for introducing Junta back to her life. Riri, after enduring a minute of torture, explains the mystery around Junta to Anzu. Apparently, Junta is a highly athletic guy who plays baseball for their school. Oh, and he's had a crush on Anzu ever since middle school. Anzu tells her she shouldn't add to her problems but Riri tells her it's already too late, and Junta's not leaving anytime soon. Anzu picks up her bag and gets back outside only to find Junta talking to himself. When she checks for Tsukasa, she finds out he's long gone. Anzu decides to tag along with Junta to school. On their way to school, Junta expresses his surprise seeing as Anzu doesn't seem like the type to keep a boy living at her place. Anzu explains Tsukasa's predicament to Junta but Junta asks if she can trust him. Anzu tells him she has her parents' permission so he shouldn't worry too much about her. Just then, a strong wind blows by them which has them stopping right in their tracks. Junta looks at Anzu and spots a Herculean beetle stuck in her hair. He tells her to hold still while he takes the beetle out. Anzu keeps fidgeting but Junta eventually manages to pull it out. He fondles the beetle a little bit before letting it go. The two then continue their trip to school. Along the way, Riri does one of her tricks again and causes Anzu to fall on Junta. Junta helps Anzu get back up and spots her ruined hair. He tells her about it and offers to tie it up for her. Anzu allows Junta to tie up her hair as she complains about her weird life. Just then, she spots Saki come by and offers to finish tying up her hair. When Saki's done making her hair, the trio heads off to school. 
Anzu spends more time with Junta who's friendlier than Tsukasa. At the subway station leading to their school, Tsukasa and his friend, Makoto, find the stalker Rina by mistake who accuses Tsukasa of leaving her hanging the previous day. She even tries getting Tsukasa's contact but he refuses her proposal and just leaves. By the fourth period, Tsukasa and his friend change into their gym clothes and keep walking towards the auditorium. On the way, they run into Junta and his crew and stop a little to say hi before passing each other. Makoto narrates Junta's feats as an Eichmann and baseball player to Tsukasa. Also, Junta's friend tells him a thing or two about Tsukasa's popularity and smartness in academics. Junta and his crew meet up with a few girls to ask them about Tsukasa. Junta hears some weird things about Tsukasa's prowess and gets jealous of him. During the free period, Tsukasa shows up in class and asks Anzu to meet him somewhere secretly near the school. There, they exchange their lunch packs as Anzu misplaced them and proceed to eat their lunch. Makoto joins them minutes later and asks to eat with them. Naturally, Anzu and Tsukasa allow him to sit with them. Before eating their lunch, the trio talk about their families and other stuff. Anzu finds out Tsukasa has a distant sister that he doesn't like to talk about before finding some chocolate in his bag. She asks Makoto for some but Riri prevents her from eating them. What she didn't know was that Rina and her friend were busy spying on her and the boys having fun. After their lessons, Rina and her friend invite Anzu to a secret spot in school to talk to her. Anzu blindly follows them without knowing what they have planned for her. Junta and his guys also finish their lessons at that time. Junta leaves his friends to go look for Anzu in her class. However, he finds Saki who tells him she just left not too long ago. Junta bumps into Tsukasa in the hallway who spots Anzu following the two bullies along the way. He and Junta follow the girls to their secret spot. There, they listen to the girls question Anzu about her closeness to Tsukasa. Anzu senses trouble brewing but she makes it absolutely clear to the girls that there's nothing going on between her and Tsukasa. Thankfully, Rina believes her as she holds her hands and asks Anzu to set her up with Tsukasa. Anzu thinks about Tsukasa's feelings and decides to do nothing of that nature. She tells the girls she's doing nothing because Tsukasa isn't ready to date anybody. Rina and her friend seem very pissed but before things escalate to another level, a weird blondie shows up and saves Anzu from the danger. After the bullies are gone, Anzu recognizes the person in front of her as Riri transforms into a human. Anzu gets even more embarrassed when she finds out Tsukasa and Junta have been eavesdropping on her meeting with the bullies all along. Tsukasa apologizes for following her and mentions that he is doing that just to save her from any danger from the bullies. Riri teases Anzu about her breast size again and gets hit in the face. Tsukasa, however, thanks Anzu for helping him out back when Rene asked to hook up with him. Anzu tells him it's nothing and that it's just her being there for a friend. Junta then asks about Riri's identity and Riri tells them she's Anzu's distant cousin. Tsukasa and Junta both express surprise as Riri fidgets all around the place and asks them out for a night meeting at Anzu's house. Initially, the boys refuse but Riri eventually persuades them all to come over. Hours before nightfall, Anzu gets into her boring arse pajamas so she can throw the boys off her scent. However, Riri has other plans as she arrives and smacks Anzu in the head. Anzu asks what her deal is and Riri tells her to wear something hot so the boys can fall in love with her. Anzu refuses to go with Riri's plan so she gets into a struggle with her. Riri manipulates Anzu's movements and makes her fall on Tsukasa again. This time, Anzu quickly gets up and comports herself. By nightfall, Junta arrives with a box of fried chicken his mom made and joins them for dinner. Tsukasa serves them curry rice alongside Junta's chicken, a tasty delicacy in Japan. Everybody digs in to enjoy the delicious curry rice Tsukasa made. Judging by how delicious the rice is, Junta gets really sad and competitive as he himself is no good cook. When he's done eating, he asks Anzu for seconds and the trio gets to talk about Anzu's addiction to chocolate. Riri shames Anzu for having such an addiction and then asks Tsukasa to stay with Anzu permanently. On hearing this, Anzu freezes in her tracks and retraces her steps to Riri's side. She holds Riri menacingly and threatens to hurt her if she doesn't shut up. Still, Riri tries to get Tsukasa to stay with her. When Tsukasa rejects the offer, she switches on to ask Junta to stay over. At this point, Anzu's had enough so she smacks Riri in the head again. Riri recovers fast and suggests they all play rock paper scissors. The two losers would have to get to the convenience store nearby and get everyone some ice cream. Anzu suspects Riri wants to use her wand to put the odds against herself and one of the boys so Anzu can have some time alone with one of them. To stop this from happening, she yanks the wand out of Riri's hands and decides to get to the store with her instead. On their way there, Riri uses all the tricks in her book to try and get the wand for herself. 
However, Anzu sees through all of them and drops the wand in a pile of poop to spite her. Suddenly, the wand loses all its energy and this makes Riri sad. Anzu smiles and rushes over to the store to get the ice cream. While doing the dishes, Tsukasa lets Junta know that he's not after his crush or anything. They're just friends and there's nothing more to that. Junta gets really scared and embarrassed that he is that easy to read. He even drops a plate and breaks it. Nonetheless, Tsukasa calms him down and encourages him to go for Anzu. At that moment, the girls return from the store with the ice cream. A few minutes later, everybody eats the ice cream to their fill and Junta leaves for his own home. After seeing him off, Anzu walks back upstairs and apologizes to Tsukasa for causing trouble. Tsukasa tells her it's nothing, and that he's almost never eaten with so many people before. Anzu feels sorry for him and wonders if he'll ever open up to her. Without giving it much thought, she goes to sleep. The following day, Anzu finds Riri roaming around her room. She pursues her to the corridor only to find Tsukasa all dressed up and ready for school. She quickly gets herself ready for school and heads out with Tsukasa. Tsukasa asks about Junta and she tells him he's at baseball practice. When they get to school, they run into Junta at practice and stop to say hi. While in class, Saki and two other girls walk up to Anzu to question her for walking with Tsukasa. Saki quickly handles the situation and continues a normal day in school. Anzu gets back home after classes and gets bored again. With no video games or cat to play with, she changes her clothes and sulks on her bed. Later that night, Junta gets back home and finds out he has to get some food for Anzu. Meanwhile, Anzu, who is seen sleeping, wakes up after hearing a strange sound in her mother's room. She picks up a baton and finds an underwear thief stealing his mother's panties. Realizing that he's been caught, the thief climbs down the window and runs away. At that moment, Junta was just arriving. Anzu finds him outside and asks for some help with the thief. Junta rushes after the thief and captures him before he gets too far. After handing him to the cops, Junta walks Anzu back home and compliments her look. Tsukasa arrives just in time to stop them from having a romantic moment. He tags along and listens to the entire story as they walk back. While on the way, Junta gets a call from his mother and excuses himself to pick it up. At one point, he returns with the phone in his hand and gives it to Anzu to speak with his mom. After picking up the phone, Junta's mother tells Anzu that Junta will be staying with her from then on to protect her from danger. Anzu cannot believe her ears as she turns back to see Riri in her peanut form laughing at her. The following day, Junta packs his stuff to move into Anzu's house. Anzu contemplates the two boys sharing the same room but the duo quickly reject the offer. Riri seems to be having the time of her life as she prepares herself for the drama about to happen in the next few days. Anzu shows them to their new rooms and waits for them to settle in. Junta excuses himself to get to practice and leaves. Tsukasa also excuses himself for work and leaves Anzu all alone in the house. When they're gone, Riri appears to tease Anzu again. Anzu, who's tired of her nonsense, kicks her out of the house and goes on to work as a cashier in the nearby convenience store. A few days later, Junta wakes up to find Anzu and Tsukasa doing the dishes. Anzu falls asleep while washing the plates and pisses Tsukasa off. When she's back up, she asks Tsukasa to let her cook their lunch. Tsukasa squints his face and tells her to quit cooking any food to avoid burning them. Nonetheless, Anzu cooks up all their lunches and ends up burning them all to a crisp. Still, Junta takes the lunch to school and eats it in front of his buddies. Although the food is a little burnt, Junta still eats it and even takes pictures of it. After work, Tsukasa clocks out and heads home. One of the female workers there tries walking home with him but Tsukasa stops her and walks back alone. When he gets home, Junta and Anzu forcefully invite Tsukasa to watch a movie with them. Tsukasa has no choice and enjoys his time with them. The next morning, Junta leaves early for practice. After he's gone, Tsukasa asks Anzu to go clothes shopping with him. However, Anzu tells him she doesn't know any stores around her as she shops for her clothes online. Tsukasa persuades her to follow him out so she gets to change her clothes. When she's done, Tsukasa gets really disappointed in her choice of clothes. He tries to get her to change into something hotter but Anzu keeps putting on cat-printed clothes. Tsukasa gets fed up and tells her to buy clothes with her savings. Anzu was really surprised as she planned on spending her money on games. Just then, Riri arrives and saves the day. She asks Tsukasa for some privacy while she works on Anzu's dressing style. After discussing a few things with Tsukasa, she uses her magic wand to change Anzu's clothes into something more classy. When she's done, she sends Anzu down to meet her man in makeup. For the first time, Tsukasa compliments Anzu before heading out with her. 
At the shopping mall, Anzu asks Tsukasa why he loves putting on hats so much. Tsukasa tells her it's because he hates being recognized by the ladies around him. I Manzora even rizzes up the ladies. Anzu finds a cat hoodie but Tsukasa pulls her back and shows her more classy clothes to buy. After getting her to buy more clothes, Anzu decides to take a bathroom break so she can get some privacy, leaving Tsukasa outside. While waiting for her return, Tsukasa gets really embarrassed by the ladies around him. It's as if they recognize a handsome celebrity. Mere moments after Anzu's gone, Tsukasa suffers a panic attack from the ladies all staring at him. Just when he's about to give up, Anzu returns from the bathroom and yanks him over to the pet toy store. There, Anzu fawns on cat-themed necklaces and gets them for herself. On their way back home, they run into Junta on the way. He stops by and stares at Anzu to compliment her. Anzu tells him she just went out with Tsukasa and Junta gets very sad as Tsukasa was gaining on him. Still, the trio walk back to Anzu's home and have a normal conversation for once. After eating dinner, the trio all settle down to watch the continuation of the movie from yesterday. Just then, another roach decides to spoil the fun but Tsukasa helps them destroy the bug. When the deed is done, Junta sulks because he wasn't able to help Tsukasa out due to his fear of bugs. The trio finish up their stuff with Anzu appreciating the normalcy in their new lifestyle. What she didn't know was that Riri still had some tricks up her sleeve. The following day, Anzu wakes up very late. She quickly gets dressed and heads out to school. She runs so fast that she fails to see the oncoming car and gets hit in the process. The owner of the car, which turned out to be another Eichmann, gets out to see the person they just hit. The car owner, who turns out to be Prince Hijiri Kagane, the prince of their town and a mega rich playboy, steps out of his car and offers Anzu a ride to school to make up for hitting her. Anzu, who is unaware of his rank and status, carefully steps into the expensive-looking car and tags along with the impulsive prince. On their way there, Anzu receives a text from her buddies asking for her location. After telling her her experience that morning, she looks back up and continues her journey. When they get to school, Prince Hajiri gives Anzu his contact details and continues to attend the class. After he's gone, Saki and the other girls flock around Anzu, totally jealous of her newfound popularity around Eichmann. They compliment and tease Anzu for her luck and wish they were in her shoes someday. Soon, Junta, Tsukasa, and Makoto come running to check up on Anzu. After seeing that she's fine, they take their leave. That night, Anzu gets a call from Prince Hajiri's caretaker asking her for a meeting with the prince on Sere. A few days later, Anzu gets to the agreed location and waits for the prince to come by. When he does, the prince, who's sassy as always, talks down on Anzu and urges her to follow him to a clothing store. Anzu follows him due to courtesy, and the prince gets her a change of clothes. Shortly after getting into new clothes, the prince takes her back to his car and on to their next location. On their journey there, Hijiri the prince accuses Anzu of intentionally causing an accident so she would get noticed by him. To him, Anzu is just another gold digger with no morals or integrity. Thankfully, Anzu gives him a taste of his own medicine and bruises his ego. After hearing all the nonsense Hijiri had to say, she stops the car somewhere, gets down from it, and continues walking on her own seething with rage from the prince's insolence. On his way back home, Prince Hijiri is yet to recover from Anzu's rejection. He waits patiently for Anzu to come to her senses and apologize to him. The next day, Anzu finds him in his classroom and returns the dress he bought for her during the weekends. Hijiri sits there shocked at Anzu's character towards him. He gets challenged and asks his caretaker to do something for him. After school, Anzu and Junta both walk home. They discuss a little bit about Anzu's cooking and Junta's psych to try it out. While they discuss, Anzu gets into her thoughts and wishes Junta a good girlfriend when the time comes. Just then, Riri shows up to spoil the fun but Anzu slaps her to oblivion. At that moment, Hijiri arrives and takes them all to Anzu's home. While they wait, Riri and Junta introduce themselves. Anzu gets impatient and asks Hijiri to go to the point already. Moments later, Hijiri's caretaker arrives with a box of chocolate, video games, and a few other things Anzu loves dearly. On seeing them, Anzu faints from excitement and thanks Hijiri for getting her those things. When she's done with the dopamine hit, she asks Hijiri how he got to know her likes and wants. Hijiri tells her he has his ways and walks around the room. Riri allows Anzu to keep her presence on the condition that she falls in love with Hijiri. Meanwhile, Junta questions Hijiri, asking him if he likes Anzu just like he does. Hijiri tells him about his narcissistic self. In the meantime, Anzu refuses Riri's offer and returns Hijiri's gifts. After she's done, she walks over to Junto and feels so much pity for him. 
Junt is deep inside Riri's spell and he didn't even know it. She promises to release him from her clutches before he loses himself. The following day at work, Hijiri fixes himself an opening in Hijiri's workplace just so he could get close to her. Anzu, after seeing the horror about to unfold in front of her, tries to get him off working with her. Unfortunately, it wasn't her place to decide. After work that day, Anzu goes back outside to see Hijiri's caretaker who thanks her for teaching Hijiri common sense. Due to his important personality, Hijiri had been trained to ignore the ordinary. Thankfully, since he's been attending this school, the prince has regained his interest in the ordinary things of life. The following day in school, Hijiri decides to pay Anzu for helping him make his first paycheck. This is his way of saying thank you to her for helping him find interest in the ordinary things of life. Anzu tells him to get her a chocolate-flavored drink so they can enjoy it together. Hijiri does just that and gets to enjoy his first ordinary drink with the prince. When she's done, she gets back home to find Tsukasa's phone lying on the floor. She peeks into it and finds a text message coming in from a girl asking him to meet that weekend. Today marks the one-month time frame Anzu gave Tsukasa to live in her house. Now that his period as a freeloader is over, Anzu wonders where Tsukasa would live in the meantime. That morning, while shopping for a new book, Anzu gets lost in her thoughts thinking about the text message she saw on Tsukasa's phone. She walks outside the bookstore and stands on the sidewalk thinking about the good times she's had with the boys over the past month. Unknown to her, she was standing in the way of an oncoming bully who, after spotting her lost self, bumped into her and spilled his coffee on her new book, snapping Anzu back to reality. After realizing she's regained consciousness, the bully tries to mess with her. Thankfully, a seriously beautiful white-haired lady stops by to save Anzu from the terror of the bullies. Seeing as the bullies actually respect the lady's hold on them, Anzu seizes the opportunity to pay them back for drenching her new book in coffee. After they're gone, Tsukasa arrives and calls the lady by her first name. Anzu, who's super confused, later finds out the lady is Tsukasa's elder sister, Erisa. Eventually, Erisa tags along with her brother and Anzu to her house. There, they discuss a few things and thank Anzu for helping her brother with a place to stay for a whole month. At one point, Tsukasa and Anzu excuse themselves to the kitchen to get a drink for everybody. There, the duo discuss and tease each other before returning with the drinks. Later on, Anzu asks Tsukasa and his sister why they live alone despite being high schoolers. Erisa, who's pretty secretive about their family, tells her it's because they have a shitty dad. However, she's very grateful that her younger brother is in good hands. Just then, Tsukasa receives a call and excuses himself, leaving the girls alone. When he's gone, Anzu tells Erisa about all the good things Tsukasa has done in the past. Erisa also mentions how nice her little brother is and thanks Anzu again for helping her out. Tsukasa returns from his call and mouths a few things before finishing his drink. Before leaving, Erisa asks if Tsukasa can stay over at Anzu's place for a little while, and she says yes. After their meeting with Anzu, Tsukasa and his sister leave for their place. On their way home, Erisa appreciates her brother for smiling at Anzu at the very least. After escorting his sister, Tsukasa returns home to Anzu and teases her a little bit before leaving for his room. The two have a moment for a little while but Tsukasa avoids anything out of the ordinary. When he's gone, Riri appears in her annoying form and teases Anzu for falling in love with Tsukasa. Anzu tells her it's not happening anytime soon and then ignores her. Riri rants out a little for not understanding what love is all about. Her mission is to improve Anzu's romantic life and if she can't do such a thing, she isn't good enough. She then decides to go on a mock date with Anzu so she can learn the concepts of love. After pitching the idea to Anzu, she refuses to help her out. Riri then bribed her with chocolate and video games so Anzu accepted her request. Just then, Riri transforms herself into a male and gets right to the date. First of all, she takes Anzu to the cinema to see the movies. There, they run into Tsukasa and Makoto as they walk out of a theater. Tsukasa finds Anzu holding Riri's hands and gets the wrong idea about things. Anzu squeezes Riri's hands and takes her to a corner to scold her. The duo say their goodbyes and walk into the theater to see their own movie. As the movie progresses, Riri studies the reactions of people around her to learn a thing or two. When it's all over, Riri walks Anzu out of the theater sobbing over the ending. Outside the cinema, the duo decided to get some boba drinks to chill out. Riri, who talks down on the drinks, gets the shock of her life after tasting the sweetness of the drink. Well, the two fight again and Anzu walks away frustrated at Riri. On their way, they run into Hijiri who stops by to say hi. Apparently, Hijiri was there to study the convenience stores so he could learn a thing or two about commoners. After discussing some small talk, Riri manages to piss off Hijiri. Anzu steps in to stop a fight before dragging Riri back to a corner to scold her. 
When she's done, Riri takes her to a photo booth to take some pictures. When they're done, they sit by an outdoor bench to chill out and discuss random things. Amidst their discussion, Riri starts talking about Anzu's personality as a stubborn person. She tells Riri that she's too adamant to love any man and would rather get her stuff herself. Riri figures out her job just got more tedious. Still, she sucks it up and walks Anzu home. Before they separate, Riri plants a kiss on Anzu's cheek. Unfortunately for both of them, Junta saw them. Poor dude couldn't take it so he fainted from his bike. Anzu was stupefied. The following day in school, while Anzu walks to school, she finds Junta working very hard on the baseball pitch and decides to say hi. However, she remembers the accident that happened the previous day and decides not to do so. On her way back from school, Anzu thinks a little about Junta's handsomeness and kindness. She wishes he wasn't under Riri's spell as she would have fallen for him if he truly loved her. Moments into her thinking, she's interrupted by her friends from another high school. Together, the trio board the subway train to a restaurant to chill and catch up. There, they talk about old times, including how addicted Anzu was to video games. While cackling about the good old days, the girls mention Hayami Junta, the sullen little boy who used to follow Anzu all around when they were younger. Anzu struggles to remember who or how Junta was when he was younger simply because he was a different person back then. You know, the shy, reserved and quiet who seemed to love following Anzu all around. It then clicks in Anzu's head that Junta was being called by his nickname, Tonta back then due to his chubby nature. The girls are really surprised at Anzu's reaction to Tonta but when they hear how he's doing now, they ask Anzu to call him over. Minutes later, Junta arrives looking majestic as always. The two girls, Siki and Agawa, get wet with excitement almost immediately as they all fawn around the lovely Junta. Anzu talks silently to Junta and gives the girls the suspicion that she is dating Junta. Anzu flares up and quickly tells them to quench the thought of that happening. After their meeting, Junta escorts Anzu to her house. On their way, Anzu finally realizes that Junta's love for her is true. She blushes a little and smiles at the handsome Junta. However, she quickly shoes away when Junta looks her way. When they get home, Anzu finds Riri waiting for her in her room again. This time, she holds Riri to the wall and asks her why she never told her Tonta was Junta. Well, Riri tells her that as a wizard, she's prohibited from tampering with the feelings of her subjects. She can only create circumstances to either kill the feelings or make them grow. Following her explanation, she shows Anzu a few scenarios in the past where she ignored Junta's every attempt to talk to her. Anzu suddenly realizes that she's messed up. She takes out her frustration on Riri who tells her the real truth. At one point, Anzu gets tired of hearing Riri's derogatory statements against her. She picks up the annoying wizard and throws her out of the window. The next day, Anzu joins her friends for a reunion party. On getting there, the dudes are pretty surprised over her decent dress and compliment her on it. One of the rowdy boys, Ryuya, teases Anzu before challenging her to a bowling matchup. There, Anzu gets to show off her skills as she destroys the boys three strikes to none. After losing their first game, Anzu and the other girls sit the boys down and make them confess their innermost feelings to the other girls. Every boy confesses to having crushes on different girls in their class. However, when it comes to Ryuya's turn, he lies and tells the group his first crush is his kindergarten teacher. After their confession, the boys challenge the girls to a revenge karaoke matchup. Still, Anzu destroys the boys at their own game. After the karaoke matchup, the girls get to talk about Ruya's wayward attitude. Shortly, Anzu receives a text from Junta asking her to come get him outside. Anzu steps out and returns with the new and improved Junta. Everyone opens their mouths in shock as the Junta they knew was way different. Junta walks quietly and sheepishly amongst his old friends who shower praises and compliments on him. Even Ruya, his bully back then, becomes jealous of how tall and handsome Junta has become. He opens his mouth and tries to talk dirty about Junta. However, Anzu cuts him off and tells him Junta deserves every bit of praise everybody gives him. This embarrasses Ruya and he steps outside to return home. Anzu follows him, stops him in the corridor, and talks some sense into his head. There, Ruya openly confesses his feelings to Anzu only to get rejected immediately. When asked why, Anzu tells Ruya she can't have a cheater for a boyfriend. Ruya tries to get closer to Anzu and asks about the kind of man she really likes. Anzu describes Junta to him and he gets it immediately. Junta, who is listening behind a wall, walks out with two other girls to join them. The girls tease Ruya again and leave him in a worse situation than he already is. Junta says some nice things to Ruya and gets him back to normal. Ryuya also gets back to normal and confesses to some of the horrible things he did to Junta back in middle school. Junta forgives him in a heartbeat and Ryuya returns to the karaoke bar. 
There, he gets surprised by the crew who celebrate his first rejection by playing a bunch of breakup songs to ease his hurting heart. A few days later, while exiting her workplace, Anzu runs into Junta, Tsukasa, and Hijiri's bodyguards. All four of them stop at the store's entrance to discuss a few things when Hijiri exits the store as well. Hijiri gets into his car and heads home while Anzu walks back to her house with the boys. She seems to have been enjoying her time with them lately as she keeps smiling and laughing with them. As the trio approaches Anzu's house, they find Saki there already waiting for Anzu to return. At first, she's shocked to see Junta and Tsukasa staying with Anzu. However, with a little explanation from Anzu, she gets the gist. Junta then asks her why she's there at Anzu's place so late at night. Saki tells them she was kicked out of her own house by her brother and his shitty friends after their single dad went on his shift. Apparently, her brother had planned a night party with his friends and didn't want boring Saki to spoil the fun. Saki leaves politely and rats out on her brother before getting to Anzu's house. Anzu and the boys laugh a little at Saki's boldness and laud her for it. After their hilarious chuckle, Anzu begins telling the boys about Saki's infamous way of putting bullies in their place by the words of her mouth. After their discussion for the night, Anzu sees Saki in her room. While settling in, Anzu thinks about telling her friend about Riri and her magic spells. Unfortunately for her, she gets a really bad bellyache that sends her to the toilet almost immediately. As she storms out of Saki's room, Tsukasa shows up and has a little discussion about Anzu with Saki. Saki tells him about Anzu's trustworthiness and assures Tsukasa that he can entrust her friend with anything. During her toilet break, Riri appears to Anzu and warns her never to show or tell anybody about herself and the magic spell she was under. Anzu gets the point and returns to her room after blasting the toilet. Before sleeping, Saki tries to engage her in a little discussion about their school and boys but Anzu is too tired to hear anything so she falls asleep. Saki looks at her cute friend and smiles as she remembers the first day she met the wonderful Anzu. It was just another day in school with Saki and her friends walking along the hallway when the college soccer assistant intentionally bumped into her. Apparently, Saki had rejected her crush one day, and she was angry about it. Luckily for Saki, Anzu was there to stop the bully and force her to apologize. Ever since then, Saki and Anzu have been inseparable. Time passed on back then and Saki met another cute and kind guy. Little did she know how bad things were about to become for her. The guy, Mori, acted like the perfect gentleman whenever he was around Saki. He took her on a few dates and helped her out with lots of things, hoping one day, Saki would warm up to him and accept his feelings. Things go on for a little while until one day, Mori asks Saki to meet him up in his place so he can put her through some subjects in school. Saki makes the mistake of honoring the agreement and almost gets scraped for it. Thankfully, she acted fast and escaped before it was too late. The following day in school, Mori lied and spread false rumors about what happened to everybody in school. Luckily for Saki, Anzu was always there to back her up. She takes the fight to Mori and forces him to not only apologize for defaming Saki, but also publicly admit to everybody that he lied to protect his ego. That day, Saki shed tears of joy and happiness for finding such a friend to confide in. As reality comes back to play, Saki thanks her sleepy friend and goes to bed. The following morning, Riri introduced the students to the summer break, congratulating them for making it thus far. She advises them to get to a festival that's to be held the next day. This could be a great opportunity to cool off from the stress of the semester. Initially, Tsukasa refuses to go out. However, Junta and Anzu ask him to come with them for fear of being alone. Tsukasa finally gives in and agrees to follow them. The following night, everyone attends the party. There, they meet up with other members of their class, including old friends and all. Ryuya, after seeing Tsukasa, pulls Junta to a secluded place and tells him to be very careful of Tsukasa as he fears he could steal Anzu away from him at any time. Tsukasa, on the other hand, gets very scared of people staring at him all around. Meanwhile, Makoto finds Saki alone and walks up to her to talk about random things. Later on, Mori and his deadbeat friends all show up around Saki to tease her. Thankfully, Makoto could read the environment as he takes her out of the situation, capturing her heart. Anzu joins Tsukasa and watches the fireworks with him. Anzu takes out her phone and takes a group selfie photo of all of them before posting it online for the world to see. Then, she posts several other photos of herself and her friends. At one point in the festival, Riri causes trouble again and gets scolded for it. Elsewhere, a creepy-looking woman with red hair stares at her screen in excitement after finally finding Tsukasa. Some days after the festival, Hijiri takes Anzu out on a date to the shopping mall across town. Anzu, who seems generally uninterested in the date, gets irritated after hearing Hijiri's narcissistic comments again. 
She then challenges him to a drum battle to bruise his ego but Hijiri avoids it. He then points to a doll machine not too far away from them and asks if they could do that instead. Anzu picks some interest in one of the dolls there and Hijiri buys them all. Up next, Hijiri takes Anzu to the photo booth to take some photos of themselves. When they're done, Anzu ends the date and exits the mall. Right outside the mall, the red-haired woman from earlier, Yukana Kishi, catches up to her, introduces herself as Tsukasa's girlfriend, and asks to see Tsukasa one more time. While on his way home, Hijiri's bodyguard informs his protectee that someone has been following them all day long and that he finds it a bit odd that they left Anzu at the mall entrance back then. Anzu, on the other hand, escorts the so-called girlfriend to her own house. Although something doesn't add up, Anzu keeps up with Yukana just out of courtesy. When they arrived at her house, Tsukasa was just coming out. On seeing the lady, he freezes as if he's just seen a ghost and keeps wondering why the woman came back to his life. Anzu keeps her wits about her and blocks Yukana from having any form of contact with her friend. Then, she takes Tsukasa back inside and calms him down. Tsukasa barfs and rushes over to the kitchen leaving Anzu very worried about his well-being. When asked for some insight on the matter, Tsukasa decides to spill the beans. He sits Anzu down and finally tells her the truth. Turns out Yukana was Tsukasa's stalker. It all happened fatefully when Tsukasa had helped Yukana up after falling down. Yukana, after seeing Tsukasa, began waiting at the same spot every day just to see Tsukasa and greet him. At first, Tsukasa doesn't read any meaning to it. However, Yukana took it too far by sending Tsukasa gifts almost every day. Shirts, shoes, pants, and the likes. Tsukasa, who was just a gentle polite boy at the time, couldn't do much about it. One day during dinner, their deadbeat father accuses Tsukasa of stealing his mother's credit card to buy those gifts for himself. Erisa butts in and calls her dad ridiculous for thinking his own son would do such a thing. Tsukasa knows this has to stop so he stands at the same spot the next day to meet Yukana. When she comes, he outrightly tells her never to send any presents to him again. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough to stop Yukana as she kept on waiting and waiting at the same spot just to see Tsukasa. One day, while doing his homework, Tsukasa takes a drink from a bottle on his desk and faints shortly. Just then, the psycho Yukana arrives and molests his unconscious body in every way possible. To make matters worse, she posted videos of herself and Tsukasa online. The repercussions for Tsukasa weren't good at all as everyone hated him, even his own strict father. The humiliation she caused Tsukasa still wasn't enough for Yukana as she still tried meeting him one day if not for Erisa who knocked her unconscious. From then on, life became very bad for Tsukasa as he had to wear hats everywhere he went. Eventually, he moved away from his hometown in search of a new life. This backstory explains the reason behind his coldness towards girls and stuff. After arriving in Anzu's hometown, he began living a life of utmost secrecy for fear of being discovered again. After his story, Anzu cries and hugs him tightly. Later on, Tsukasa's people contact the police to keep Yukana at bay. That night, Erisa stays behind at Anzu's house to watch over her little brother. Meanwhile, Yukana's caretakers propose suing Tsukasa for tempting Yukana into her psychotic state. Typical of them. Thankfully, Yukana forbids them from doing such a thing as she gets very bitter at her arch enemy, Anzu. Anzu, who's still at work, exhibits some different aura from the one Hijiri used to. He calls her out on her behavior and makes sure she's okay. Anzu appreciates the thought and changes into her mufti to head home. Sadly for her, she left her phone behind at work so the manager picks it up and asks about her from her people. Soon, Saki and her elder brother stop by the store to check up on her. However, on getting there, they find out Anzu wasn't there. Then why did she text them to meet her there? Anyways, Anzu meets with two thugs outside who drag her to an alleyway to beat her up. Luckily for her, before they get to beat her down, Junta, Ryuya, Saki, her brother, Hijiri's bodyguard, and a few other friends of Anzu show up to beat the living shit out of the guys. The guys are then interrogated and asked about the person who sent them. After much pressure, the guys confess to a weird woman, Yukana, blackmailing them into attacking Anzu. Anzu squeezes her face and returns home with her friends. Outside their home, however, Anzu wonders who could have texted the girls as she never did such. Inside, everyone makes a promise to Tsukasa to keep him away from Yukana. Then, Enzu walks to her room and finds Riri there. Riri, after throwing a tantrum, confesses to messaging Anzu's friends to come save her when she was in danger. For once, Anzu thanks Riri for her help but Riri says something insultive again and forces Anzu to throw out her wand to a pile of poop. In the meantime, Junta finds Tsukasa in the living room worried sick about Anzu and the others. The duo talk about the person they like and laugh about their experiences. A few days later, Hijiri asks for an update on the Yukana situation. 
Anzu assures him it's all taken care of at least and then heads home after changing into her mufti. Anzu takes the back door to the alleyway beside her restaurant and finds Yukana there waiting for her with a knife. Yukana says hi and then slashes Anzu in the forehead with her knife. Meanwhile, Anzu's people are still in the backyard waiting for her to show up so they can get home together. However, when they notice she's almost gone, they get outside to search for her. They stroll around the alleyways and nearby surroundings until Tsukasa spots Yukana near Anzu and stops to help her out. Tsukasa, after seeing the wounds on Anzu's face, loses it and rushes towards Yukana to punch her. Still, Yukana refuses to show any remorse. Instead, she keeps asking Tsukasa to recognize her as his woman and date her. Anzu walks in front of her and demands she stops hunting Tsukasa down like he was some sort of game. Just then, the police arrive and escort Yukana to the station to stand trial for her crimes. Anzu faints a little and is rushed to the hospital to treat her wounds. Hours later, Anzu walks out of the hospital with nothing but a bandage around her head. Before heading home, Tsukasa's dad and mother arrive at the hospital with Erisa and force Tsukasa to bow down his head and apologize to Anzu. After apologizing, he pulls Tsukasa's hands and begins taking him home with him. Thankfully, Anzu yanks Tsukasa's hands away from his father's and takes him home herself. Tsukasa's dad just stands there in utter shock of what just happened to him. As they leave the hospital, Anzu shames the dad and leaves him rethinking his life decisions before leaving. At home, Tsukasa thanks Anzu for helping him with his father earlier. He recalls his first moments with Anzu and gives her a very tight hug to show his appreciation for helping overcome his trauma. Anzu receives his hug and tells him that her mother's coming over from the States to check on her. Junta arrives just in time to see Tsukasa hugging his love. He faints and rolls back up to his bed out of embarrassment. A few moments later, Anzu's mother arrives from the States, thrilled to see her daughter again. After all the hugs and kisses, the entire family sits down to discuss Yukana and her punishment. What they didn't know was that Riri was outside eavesdropping on their conversation. After hearing all she wanted, she flies herself to Hijiri's house and listens to him banning Yukana's uncle from saving Yukana this time. Riri then gets an idea to save Anzu and Tsukasa once and for all. She transforms herself into a human and teleports herself into Yukana's cell. After doing the deed, she appears to Anzu again and has a nice little chat with her. When she's done, she changes to her male form and plants a soft kiss on Anzu's forehead. This does not go well with Anzu as she races up and down, searching for a way to beat Riri again. Later on, the entire family receives news about Yukana's latest condition. Apparently, Riri had given her amnesia, which means she's forgotten all about Tsukasa and her obsession with him. Obviously this brings joy to the family as they congratulate Tsukasa on winning the case already. Just then, Anzu's dad arrives from the States with all of his daughter's favorite things in life, chocolate, video games, and most importantly, Momohiki, her cat. Anzu is psyched to see this happen but then she wonders why Riri didn't confiscate her stuff this time. Nonetheless, she accepts her gifts and moves on. That night, Tsukasa confesses his newfound feelings for Anzu to Junta. Junta immediately shrinks into the ground from embarrassment and accepts defeat already. Tsukasa tells him to grow a pair and become man enough to ask her out. Just then, Anzu arrives in the living and keeps calling after Riri. Unfortunately for her, another wizard appeared. The wizard, who calls herself Kate, shows up and tells her about Riri's unfortunate termination from her mission. The two boys show up and find Anzu talking to the magical wizard. They're both shocked and confused at the unusual turn of events. Anzu decides to stop lying to them and tells them the entire truth. When they're done, Anzu keeps questioning Kate on the whereabouts of Riri. Apparently, Riri broke a taboo in their world by using her magic for her personal reasons when she gave Yukana amnesia and redirected Anzu's friends to save her back then. So she's been banned from the real world and would serve some minor punishment in their dungeons. After explaining all there is to the story, Anzu thanks Kate for her explanation and yanks her wand away from her hand. She quickly races towards the toilet and threatens to flush the wand into the toilet if Kate doesn't summon Riri to the real world. Kate is left with no choice so she communicates with her world and they allow Riri into the real world for about 15 minutes. After appearing there, Anzu asks Riri to transform into her human form and tells her the most heartwarming things Riri never thought to hear at that instant. She thanks Riri for always being there for her even when she was too stubborn to see how much she was going through to help her. Tsukasa and Junta also thank Riri for helping them with their own problems. Riri cries a little and says her goodbyes. What she didn't know was that Anzu wasn't done with Kate yet. After getting Riri back on her side, she turns to Kate and exploits a technicality in their contract to force Kate into letting Riri stay with her there on Earth. Things go back to normal from then on but this time, 
Anzu has her things back. She still lives with the boys and talks to them like normal friends. One day, while on her way from school with Tsukasa and Junta, Anzu runs into Hijiri and discusses a few things with him before returning home. This time, she runs into Riri again who tells her the new rule in their contract. Apparently, if Anzu fails to fall in love before graduation, her favorite things would be confiscated forever. In the final scene of the series, Kate gets a new mission and that is to make Yukana fall in love with a real person. 